Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. You play a dice rolling game where you can win money. You roll a fair six-sided dice. You can stop and earn the value of the roll in dollars, or you can roll again. If you roll again, the same rules apply. You can stop and earn the value of the roll, or you can roll again. If you choose to roll a third time, you will earn the value of the roll and the game ends. How should you play this game to earn the most money on average and how much money can you earn? In other words, what is the expected value of this game? I want to thank James M for sending me a problem which inspired this video. And before I get to the countdown and the solution, I want to mention one point. Whenever I make a video about rolling a dice, someone always emails me or leaves a comment that dice is the plural and die is the singular. So let me just read from the Oxford Dictionaries the usage of the word dice. Historically, dice is the plural of die, but in modern standard English, dice is both the singular and the plural. Throw the dice could mean a reference to either one or more than one dice. So it is perfectly correct to say you roll a fair six-sided dice. With that in mind and with these rules of the game, can you figure it out? Give this problem a try and when you're ready, keep watching the video for a solution. So here's one way that the game could play out. On your very first roll, you could get any of the six numbers from one to six. Let's suppose you get the number two. You decide that's too low of a value, so you choose that you wanna roll again. So then you could get any of the six possibilities. And let's suppose you get the number three. You decide that three is too low of a value, so you decide to roll again and on the third roll, you could get any of the six possibilities. Let's suppose you get lucky and you get a five. So you'll get paid $5. The question is, how should we play this game? How do we know when we should roll again versus when we should just stop? To figure that out, we need to think ahead and analyze backwards. So if you roll for the third time, what is your average payout? In other words, let's not consider the first two rolls of the game, let's just focus on the third roll and ask, if we got to the third roll, what would our average payout be? Well, if we just focus on this, what would the value be? Let's write VI to be the value of the game before roll I. On the third roll, the dice shows each number from one to six with equal chance. So V3 will be the average of these numbers, which equals 3.5. So we know that if we get to the third roll, we can expect an average payout of 3.5. Therefore, we can replace this entire diagram of the third roll with just one value of the average payout of 3.5. What that allows us to do is then think backwards to the second roll. Knowing the third roll gives an average of 3.5, how should we play the second roll? Well, let's think about this logically. If you get a roll that's larger than 3.5, it would make sense to stop and take the larger payout because rather than getting an average of 3.5, we're actually getting something more than 3.5. So if we roll a four, five, or six, we should stop at the second roll. On the other hand, if we roll less than 3.5, we should not stop and accept this lower value. We should instead continue to the third roll where we get an average of 3.5. So if we get one, two, or three, it would make sense to roll again. Because rather than getting the smaller value, we would get an average of 3.5 on the third roll. 
Now, if we stop, we will get the value of that roll. So we would either get a four, five, or six with equal chance. So the average one we stop will be the average of four, five, and six, which is five. So now we can figure out the value of the second roll based on these possibilities. We'll either get a four, five, and six, and we'll stop and get our average payout from there, or we'll get a one, two, or three, and we'll roll again and get the average payout of the third roll. So half the time, or three-sixths of the time, we'll get an average payout of five because we've stopped, and the other three-sixths, or half the time, will roll to the third and get an average payout of 3.5. So the value in the second roll is the average of these possibilities, which equals 4.25. So now what can we do? Well, we need to analyze backwards one more time to the first row. We can do the same sort of calculation. We can replace the entire possibility of the second row by V2 equals 4.25. Now let's think about the first row. Knowing that the second row can give us an average of 4.25, how should we play the first row? Just like before, we analyze this logically. If we get a roll that's larger than this average payout, 4.25, it would make sense to stop and take the larger payout. In this case, this would be for the rolls five and six. Furthermore, if we get a roll that's smaller than the average payout of 4.25, you should not stop and instead continue to the second roll where you could get that average payout of 4.25. So if you roll a one, two, three, or four, you would want to roll again. So in those cases, you would not accept the lower value. You would get the average payout of 4.25 by rolling again. If we were to stop, we would get an average payout of five or six, which becomes 5.5. So now we can calculate the average value from before the first roll. We'll either roll a five or six and stop and get that expected payout, or we'll roll one, two, three, or four, and then we'll decide to roll again and get the average payout before the second roll. So we can substitute in those values. Two sixths or one third of the time, we'll get an average payout of 5.5, and four sixths or two thirds of the time, we'll get an average payout of 4.25. Adding those, we get a result of 14 over three which equals 4.6 repeating. And that's the value to this game from the first roll. So let's think about this. If we were to just roll the dice a single time, we would get an average of 3.5. But because we get up to three rolls and we play optimally, we can actually increase our average to about 4.67. And that's an increase of about 33.3% in winnings. So that's a huge increase in winnings because we're allowed the option of rolling a second and third time and we decide to roll optimally. Did you figure it out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions. If you like this video, you can check out my books, which are linked in the video description. You can support me on Patreon. If you have a suggestion, you can email me. My email address is presh at mindyourdecisions.com. You can also catch me on social media, either at Mind Your Decisions or at Presh Hallwalker, depending on the site.